What's up everyone? This is Thomas Sonny from the Drivers Apex. Welcome back to another episode and today we're going to talk about the S54 rod bearings and oil analyses. Fun stuff. So let's jump into it. So I've had this M3 for almost a year and what I did was after I bought the car I sent the oil out because I wanted to know what the rod bearing health looked like. Anytime you buy an E46 M3 what's the one big thing everyone wants to know where the rod bearings done. I didn't have enough maintenance records to determine if the rod bearings had been done. So it was sort of a gamble. I got the car at a really great price and I thought it'd be okay. It was driven by people who were incredibly responsible. So I wasn't too, too worried. So what I'll do is I'll put up a little report here from Speed Diagnostics. And if you look and see, you will see at the lead, um, the lead is 104. So when I saw 104, I immediately started having heart palpitations because 104 in my mind meant that the car, the S54 was going to grenade itself. And I was not in a position to do rod bearings or buy a new engine or rebuild the engine or anything like that. So I ran both Blackstone and Speed Diagnostics. A lot of people in the S54 community have used and still use Blackstone. Um, I think they do great work. I've gone with Speed Diagnostics after talking with Lake Speed Jr. He told me a lot about his company, who he is, uh, his experience in racing, why he does oil analyses for NASCAR. Um, he knows, you know, Kyle Busch's oil versus someone else's oil and how they drove the car. So after talking with him, I knew that the oil that I was sending out was in good hands. Lake Speed Jr. wasn't too, too worried about the results. He had asked if I raced the car. I told him I don't race the car. So with that said, he said, don't worry. It's, it's fine. Everything is about data. We need to collect as many data points as possible. So get 2,500 miles on the car, send the oil back to me. Let's evaluate the oil, see where we're at. And then again, I need you to send oil out again and start um, showing data, as much data as possible. So that's what I did. So in April of 2022, I sent out again uh, oil to Speed Diagnostics. What I did immediately, like every time I would see an email from Speed Diagnostics or Blackstone, I'd start like getting really anxious. This was like a huge celebration for me because when I pulled it up and immediately looked at the lead factor, the lead was a huge difference in that it was showing one. And then copper pretty much remained the same. So I wasn't too worried about copper. So that was a huge relief. So what I did was I converted to liquid molly because I was running Castrol TWS. For some reason, I was consuming a half a quart to a quart every 900 miles. So that had me a little worried. Read a lot of stuff on the internet. Some S54s were burning oil or consuming oil and some S54s were not. They could go the whole three or 6,000 miles without burning any oil. After doing some research, I converted to liquid molly. I used their molybdenum additive once I did that, I noticed that no longer was I consuming oil. I could go the whole 3,000 miles without using a drop of oil. So that felt really good. So fast forward to September, late September. Now it's October. We're talking about data. Again, lead, copper look all fantastic. What's nice about speed diagnostics, and if we look at the report here, is it'll tell you aluminum is pistons or manganese is valve guide like it'll give you an idea of where the wear is occurring within the engine and what to kind of look out for at this juncture i don't really have anything to look out for and i think it comes down to a couple different things one i learned through a bunch of phone calls that this particular car had a rod bearing service or the recall done um, at eleven thousand miles so we're effectively right around the fifty thousand mile mark on these revised rod bearings a lot of people um, say, keep driving it. A lot of other people will say, screw that. You don't know until you get the rod bearings out. Just get them repeat, replaced immediately. I have good faith in the data that I'm getting back about what's the condition of the rod bearings. I would be curious, right, if I had the, the money right now to do the rod bearings. But I think what's most important with S54s or these high revving BMW M engines is oil temperature. S54s are a unique engine in that compared to my Honda CRV or probably even my BMW E30 with an M20, 
engine oil temperature is everything. So if we take a look here, I'm between 120 and 210, so let's just say I'm at like 150 or something like that. With that said, I never shift beyond 2500 RPMs until I hit the magic number of 210 degrees. So I think we can all agree that getting the car to 210 or the proper oil temperature is everything in these engines. I think it's a misconception that you can hop in the car, especially on a cold day, run to Walmart, wherever it is that you're going, and immediately rev on it, and you can't. Here's what I do, and I've talked about this on a lot of different videos. I don't rev the car beyond 2,500 RPMs, or even maybe 3,000, uh, until we're approximately in that 200, 210 degree range. For me, it's not the end of the world. We're talking maybe 10 miles to the interstate, something like that. The car has plenty of power that when you're shifting up to 2,500 or 3,000 RPMs, you're moving with traffic, you're, you're not impeding the traffic, anything like that. And then once it's up to 10, yeah, of course I get on it. And if you've watched my videos, I'm no stranger to revving this thing out to the 8,100 RPMs. So I think for rod bearings to last in these cars, and I'll be curious to see this as we continue sampling the oil for the next 3,000 miles, 3,000 miles. I'm gonna do oil changes every 3,000 miles. It's a little expensive, but I wanna make sure that I'm collecting data, that I'm doing everything to maintain a proper uh, and reliable engine in this car because I, I don't wanna replace the engine. I don't wanna do a big rebuild or anything else like that. So what all this is really telling us is Oil temperature is everything in these cars. Sending your oil out to be evaluated, I think is a really, really good idea. So if you're on the fence about sending out your oil, if you get anything from this video, send out your oil and have it evaluated. One of the other great things that I learned by uh, reading the different notes in here from Lake Speed Jr. is the viscosity. The viscosity in each of the oils was breaking down. And if I look deeper here, it's, it's said that I should use a, um, an injector cleaner, that it's, it's oxidizing the oil and it's helping to break down the oil. So one of the things that I'm gonna do, and I already did it, was I ordered uh, some Liqui Moly injector cleaner. I can't remember the exact name, but I'll put a link in the video for it. What I'm curious about is, I'll get that in the next few days, I'll run it in the car, uh, I don't know if I need to run it every oil change or how we do, or if I do it every like, I don't know yet. I'm gonna look deeper into it. But I wanna see, does running this injector cleaner, does it improve oxidation and does it impact the viscosity breakdown? Now, Lake Speed Jr. says that it's normal for 1060 to pretty much break down to a, a 1050 weight. But what I'm really curious about, and I'll point it out in the, in the data here is, does that injector cleaner, does it make a difference? And, and is the breakdown, is it happening later in the oil cycle? I'm not sure, so stay tuned for that video. So um, I think the most important thing, again, as I said, um, frequent oil changes, which I actually didn't say frequent oil changes, uh, for me, I might go to 4,000, but I'm not gonna go anything more than 4,000. It'll probably be somewhere in the three to 4,000 mile oil change. Oil temperature, 210. I think a good quality oil is really, really important. I only, I only use the BMW oil filters as well. If you've checked my videos, you'll see that I only use the BMW filters. So I think those are the three big things. Frequent oil changes, operating oil temperature, and then using good quality oil and oil filters. If you wanna make sure that your S54 is lasting, that you're able to rev on it, because that's why we buy E46 M3s with S54s is to rev the piss out of them because they're hilarious on the top end. So that's my recommendation uh, is do those th three things. I'm not guaranteeing that that's what's gonna save your rod bearings or prevent any kind of catastrophic failure, but I think there's three common sense values to stick to to ensure that your car is running reliably every day with as little maintenance cost as possible. So I hope you guys like this video. I think it's really important to me to talk about data analysis, oil samples, why I'm going with different places. Uh, so right now I'm gonna stick to speed diagnostics. Doesn't mean anything against Blackstone, continue using Blackstone if that's what you wanna use. Right now I'm gonna use speed diagnostics until 
I don't know. I, I have no intentions right now of transitioning from speed diagnostics, but my big goal right now is just to collect data, as much data as possible. I think it's really important. Again, I think a lot of us in the S54 community are looking for as much information as possible. You know, if you're on bring a trailer um, and the car has low miles, I'm at 61,000 miles, it doesn't necessarily mean that the rod bearings have to be done. I think if you get a PPI done or if you have the time to get an oil sample done, if someone can send out the oil in time, it'll give you an idea of what the health of the engine looks like. And that in itself gives you confidence when you're buying an S54. Unless you're doing rod bearings yourself, it's gonna cost a little bit of money. So I think it's just a good measure to collect oil, use good oil, sample it as often as possible and collect data. I think this is also really important if you ever to decide to sell your E46 M3, uh, the more data and the more information that you have, the more informed the next person's gonna be and that gives them the confidence to buy your car. So take care of your car and people will give you good money for your car.